I know people are still in line, but I think we will get started. As you'll see on your screens, our next talk is on the rabbits of Okunoshima, rewilding the domestic or domesticating the wild. Margo DeMello, Kotoyo Hoshina, and Koushi Takahashi. Margo DeMello is president of House Rabbit Society and the program director for human animal studies at Animals and Society Institute. She currently teaches at Kinesius College in the Anthrozoology Master's Program. Margo has been rescuing rabbits since 1989 and has lived with large groups of domestic, free-range rabbits since the early 1990s. Margo is a nationally known expert on rabbit behavior and has written extensively on animals, rabbits, and human-animal studies. Kotoyo Hoshina moved to Wisconsin from Japan in 2005 as a researcher for the world's largest neutrino observatory. She traveled to the U.S. with her three rabbits and joined Wisconsin HRS, later volunteering and becoming an educator. She is the webmaster and provides technical support for WHRS website. She got her first rabbit in 2003, but lost her three days later due to diarrhea. This painful experience drove her to learn more about rabbits. She started a Japanese blog to introduce the philosophy of HRS and how to care for rabbits, which was new for many Japanese owners. She wrote numerous articles for rabbit magazines in Japan, including how to bond rabbits. She joined Margo, or she joined Margo's study at Okunoshima, Rabbit Island in 2015 and presented the results at the fifth annual World Lagomorph Conference in 2016. Koishi Takahashi has been an educator for the Wisconsin House Rabbit Society since 2014. In 2005, she moved to the U.S. with her three rabbits from Japan and joined WHRS. After years of volunteering with WHRS, she went back to school and graduated with a BS in animal science and also completed her veterinary tech program. While earning her degree, she visited Okunoshima with Margo in 2015 and presented the results at the Fifth World Lagomorph Conference in 2016. I give you all three of these ladies. Thank you, Benita. So, um, uh, as Benita said, I teach in the anthrozoology program at Canisius College, and it is, um, I think it's still the only master's program in basically human animal studies in the United States. And, and what we do there is we have students who um, uh, enroll for a two-year master's program in any facet of studying the human-animal relationship. And as part of that program, sometimes faculty take the students on research trips. And the first year that I started there, and I had heard about a research trip that had just happened with one of the faculty taking some students to Puerto Rico to study the stray dog issue, I thought, well, I could do one of those. Um, and I decided that we would go to Okunoshima. And originally I had like a half dozen students who wanted to go with me that ultimately dwindled down to one student, Cassandra um, Booger, who is not here with us today. Um, thankfully, besides Cassandra, Katoyo, and Koshi, who I had known informally through House Rabbit Society, because they're from Japan, um, uh, and obviously share some of the same interests as I do, decided to go with me as well and served as important co-researchers as well as translators. Um, when we started our project, we were interested in the human-animal relationship. We were interested in the impact that the tourists, which I'll mention in a few minutes, have on the rabbits who live on that island. Um, we came with some uh, survey questions that we were gonna ask the tourists as we were there. We were there for almost two weeks, um, um, interviewing people every day, but as we were there, our focus sort of changed to focusing less on the people and more on the rabbits. How they behaved, what they were doing, and then reading through that behavior 
how the tourists impact the rabbits. So the, the so study sort of changed while we were there. Okay, next slide. Oh, so. This is just a video that we took while we were on the island. Just for those of you who haven't seen the countless YouTube videos about Okunoshima. We think there are about a thousand rabbits on the island, at least as of 2015. Um, um, uh, Katoyo and Kushi are gonna talk after I'm done and lead you through most of the slides and they're essentially gonna take you through a tour of the island. It's a very small island. Um, um, and they're gonna take you uh, through a tour. This right here is taken at the ferry. The island is only accessible from the mainland on a ferry. Um, and when you get off the ferry, you are greeted by dozens, sometimes hundreds of rabbits, depending on the time. Um, so this is just a little bit to get you kind of contextualized as to who they are, what they do. This is a group of five. We found communities all over the island, separate communities all over the island, and that group of five lived on a, a little isolated wall. Um, people come to the island, it's, it's uninhabited, no one lives on the island, so people come to the island loaded down with food, which we did as well every day. Um, to feed the rabbits. This is the hotel on the island. There is a hotel where you can stay. There's also campgrounds. Um, so there's always tourists on the island, although obviously that goes up and down depending on the season. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, so Okunoshima is a small, it's only 123 acres, um, island located in the Inland Sea of Japan. That's on the southern coast of Japan in Hiroshima Prefecture. Again, it's accessible only via ferry from the mainland. Next slide. So one of the things that, that again, didn't really guide our original interest, but, but became apparent the longer that we were there, was that these rabbits um, are living in an extraordinary situation. They are domestic rabbits that are feral. They have lived on the island for at least 30 generations. Um, there are different sort of um, stories about how they got on the island. One story is that they were um, dropped off by, in a group of eight by some school kids in the 1970s. That tends to be the most accepted story. Um, um, most more recently, we heard that, um, that they actually were brought there intentionally by the people who run the hotels as a tourist attraction. We've only heard that once and only recently. Um, and then there was some suggestion, so the island has a long history um, in Japan. It had been used for, because of its isolated nature, it had been used for poison gas testing um, prior to and during World War II. And the subjects of that poison gas testing were, you might guess, rabbits, Japanese white rabbits. Um, um, those rabbits were allegedly all killed at the end of the war. There are some rumors that maybe they were let free at the end of the war, that some of them got free. Um, um, but whether any of those rabbits have anything to do with this current population, nobody knows. Just probably isn't the case. Okay, next slide. So again, very small island. It's only two and a half miles around. Um, uh, you will take a little visit of that island uh, in a couple of minutes and see that even though it's a very small island, it has a lot of different ecological zones and those ecological zones translate to different, not just communities of rabbits uh, with different territories that they defend in the ways that we all understand rabbits to defend territories, but they, um, um, those different zones with the different levels of human tourism at those zones translate into different behaviors on those different areas of the island. Um, it is now a national park that's uh, run by the national government, managed by the people who run the hotel. You can visit there to see the ruins of the poison gas factory. Um, there's different munitions there. You could go to the museum. And for years, that was the site of tourism on this island until the rabbits became well known. Um, okay, next slide. So again, Japanese whites served as test subjects. Next slide. 
So this is just a look at the island itself and some of the main features on the island. The gas storage rooms, the tennis courts, which, uh, by, by the way, virtually everything on the island is, uh, that is not concrete has been in some ways destroyed by the rabbits, and the tennis courts are no exception to that. Um, there's a visitor center, there's a lovely lighthouse, there's a campground, a power plant, again, the ferry. Next slide. This is the communities that we counted. So every day we did a new count to see who lived where and where the greatest numbers of the rabbits were. And again, how is that, how is that impacted by the human visit visitors? So this is the fairy group. This is number one. We, have, we gave numbers to all of the groupings that we found. We tried to see what kinds of relationships there were between the groups. Um, the areas that have the most tourist contact had the most rabbits. So, number one by the ferry, number 14 by the hotel with 160, and all of the sort of hotel adjacent spots also had high numbers of rabbits, 29, 39, 26. As you can see that as you go north on the island and around the top of the island, you have far fewer rabbits. Well, that's because you have far fewer people. So what we find is that because I mean, it, it is a lush island. Um, it is semi-tropical, particularly at the north end. Um, there is no natural water source, so the food source is, is the vegetation that's on the island, but it's not enough to support the population in the size that it is right now. It's the tourists that support that population. So where the tourists tend to not go, which is the northern part of the island and the center part of the island, you tend to not have that many rabbits. Um, although, as we'll talk about, those rabbits will tend to be a little bit more healthy than the others. Next slide. So these are domesticated rabbits. They have been domesticated, as we all know, rabbits were domesticated about 1,500 years ago. They're not very genetically different from their wild European rabbit counterparts uh, who still live in Europe today. They're not genetically different really from them at all and they can still interbreed. Um, although there are some differences that are primarily behavioral and a little bit physical. Um, um, and, and partly because of this recent period of domestication, they've been able to go sort of very wild very quickly as feral animals. On the other hand, and this is one of the most important and interesting parts of this, on the other hand, what we see is that these rabbits have gone nature, natural in some ways because they live on this island with no people. And on the other hand, they have become almost aggressively friendly because of the tourists. So they basically hustle for a living. Um, every day, they've set their schedules based on the tourists that arrive on the island so that they can maximize their food intake opportunities. Um, so they are domestic rabbits who've gone feral that act in many ways very wild, but also act friendlier than, I'm gonna gauge most of the rabbits in, that you guys have in, in your homes. Um, and at the same time, the Japanese government considers them to be wild animals. And as wild animals, they should not be fed and they should not be interfered with. And even though of course they're not wild, they're also invasive. So that's also problematic with respect to the Japanese government. Next slide. Uh, next, this is, oh, oh and so I'm going to hand over to, um, to Kushi and Katoyo in a couple minutes, but I just want to say another few things about them. I want to emphasize, and I talked about this at length um, um, recently when I was with, at Madison, Wisconsin at their bunny day, I want to emphasize the cunning and the adaptive skills that these rabbits demonstrate in not only adapting to a wild lifestyle when these rabbits originally came from some kind of a domestic environment, who knows whether they lived as, in cages as classroom pets or what, but they certainly had some sort of a domestic background and now have fully um, learned to live in the wild, to dig their burrows in the wild, to have their babies in the wild, so they've gone fully wild and at the same time, um, they aren't just dependent on humans, they are able to manipulate humans. Um, <laughs> next slide. So 
there was a YouTube video that we've got on here that was released in 2014 of a young woman from Hong Kong on the island being chased by a massive herd of rabbits. That video went viral um, and it resulted in an explosion of tourists to the island and an radical demographic change of the tourists who were already going to the island, most of which were Japanese, most of which were seniors who went to the hot springs or children who came as part of school tr field trips to see the Japanese, um, the, the Poison Gas Museum and all that kind of stuff. Now we have massive numbers of foreign visitors, massive amounts of young people and people who specifically come to the island to see the rabbits. So you can see um, a couple of things. There was Year of the Rabbit in 2011 within Japan, not really internationally, but within Japan, you had a big influence of, of media, um, which brought in some more tours. But what you really had was 2014. This is when the video came out, and this is when we saw the explosion of visitors, which results in an explosion of rabbits from about 400 to about 1,000. OK, next slide. This is the video. <laughs> It's still one of the better videos taken from Okinoshima, and I think that's partly because by the time she visited here, there weren't that many other tourists. So she was a real windfall for these rabbits. <laughs> now there's a lot of competition because there's a lot of other tourists who come. Um, next slide. So what we have today is a group of rabbits who are treading this interesting line between wild and domestic and feral, between um, being um, solely self-sufficient and creating these new lives for themselves based on the wild resources that are available to them um, in new, sometimes new and interesting ways but also utilizing the people, manipulating the people. I mean, they don't know about the YouTube video, but if it weren't for them and their reaction to that woman and her posting of that video, people from around the world would not be going to this island weighed down with food to feed the rabbits, um, uh, which is keeping them alive and sustaining them in, in, in really too high numbers. Um, and so it's sort of, it's a good and a bad thing, which we'll talk about. Um, and I'm not sure if I've reached the point yet to turn over to you guys. This is a nice example, by the way, of the tourists. Um, uh, this was, I believe, a Japanese man who um, was coming to photograph. So you've got a lot of people obviously photographing the animals. Um, um, you do have some local, not very many, but a few local activists who come regularly and who really care about the animals and, and advocate for their welfare. Um, Next slide. But primarily you've got visitors who the only thing they know about rabbits in general, and these rabbits in particular, is from YouTube. Um, and they come because the, the island is also known as not just Rabbit Island, but it's also known as Rabbit Paradise. And I'll let you decide how much paradise it is versus maybe is not. I would ask that you don't necessarily view these animals through the lens of house rabbits. Um, obviously, they could be house rabbits. Um, they're exactly the same rabbits that live in our homes today, but they have very different lives. And, and I think that what they suffer in terms of mortality and morbidity, thanks to their sort of precarious nature here, um, may perhaps be gained by a sense of autonomy, the ability to create the lives that they want to create, um, which then the tourists enable and make happen. Uh, yes, so I'm going to go ahead and, and turn uh, the microphone okay. over to my colleagues. And I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll take over here. Okay. Here we go. So uh, we have in total like 130 something slides, whole or full of it. So I don't want to explain everything. Just look at it and enjoy it. <laughs> but during the time, uh, uh, just guess what do you see inside the these pictures? Could you go next slide? So here, do you think something weird, or you already see so so many bunnies photos, so you may not 
be something different from our rabbit or white rabbit. But go oh, quick. Yeah, they are they are really unafraid of people. Okay, next. This is something like that. I, I'm not sure your bunny, the sound the shy bunny does this in your house or not. Sometimes don't. One of my bunny is like goldfish. They don't like she doesn't like to approach <laughs> to be approached by me. Next. So sometimes they jump into my bag to, to get food directly from the plastic bag. And then, next please. And uh, here is uh, the one guest. Do you think something really special about this one? Yes, the baby rabbit is the most prompt to the human, which is really rare in the wild case. Next. Yeah, go, please, next. And here, can you guess something? Okay, next, quick. They don't afraid of cars. Go, please. Like that. Oh. It's exactly the same like your cat. And this makes some problem because they don't uh, afraid of car. They might be get car accident. So in this island, the visitors cannot drive inside the island, but still hotel workers have to drive. And sometimes it has, uh, they have some uh, funny car accident. Next, please. And that's why the hotel people and the many advocates is really having caution, like do not feed on asphalt. And I, I have to confess, this is me. <laughs> so I, I, knew, I knew this sentence, but this, these cute bunnies are so legislatively cute, so I forget about that. So this is really difficult to follow. That we know this is not good. They may get very dangerous situation in the future, but still, they're so cute, and I think many people just forget about that. Yeah. Next. <laughs> next, please. Yeah, next. And uh, I think now you have some idea. This is not good food for rabbit, and uh, the each piece of carrot is too big for one bunny, and the amount of this carrot this is uh, just left over the, uh, from the visitors. The visitors don't want to take this uh, carrot to go to their home, so they just throw it away. And next, please. Uh, next, please. And the cabbages. Too much cabbages. Yeah. Next. That result in this shape of, oh, sorry, you're eating. <laughs> but it's really soft and uh, wet. <laughs> Next, please. And uh, this is an interesting picture. So these these bunnies are wearing some, somewhere around the thirty poles, but this one is commuting from other community. <laughs> okay, next. So these are the Japanese signs, and uh, it says to take your garbage. But their real mean is, of course, garbage, but also the raw. Uh, vegetable or the bunny food to please take it back. Yeah, and this one it looks like the normal picture, but click on it. The weird thing is bunnies are usually hiding from the sun in the wild situations, but these bunnies wake up on the early morning with uh, to commute to the ferry port. For example, this is the ferry port. So the, four, the first ferry arrived to the island. And their work and the last ferry leave from the island. Next. And you will see lots of these plastic trays in this island because as she said, as Marco said, there is no natural source, water source. So many visitors and volunteers are giving, pouring the fresh water in, in, especially in the summer, but still, uh, according to the repeated visitors, uh, the most high rate of death of the bunny is the summer due to the shortage of the drinking water. Okay, so now we started from the, the wharf and but we moved to the tour the other tennis school, or no, is it the campground? Tourist campground. Yeah, tourist campground. <laughs> Next. Here. 
where the Q5 or 6 uh, homes. Next. Next. Yeah. Yeah, this is another one. They do not afraid of bicycle. Yeah, so that's, what, that's why they sometimes get a uh, bi bicycle accident too. And uh, <laughs> this is a Japanese sign, and it not like to prevent it wrong, please do not uh, to please close the door to prevent the coming in the uh, funny. Go to next. But they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all rounds are already nibbled. <laughs> yes. Next. And this is an interesting case. So you see the pool from the center of the really wide ground. So they know their, where the, their, their data box is. Yeah. Okay. Next. And this is, a, I, I'm really surprised this was this one. So they just came here and they didn't, didn't beg me for food. So what happened is, yes hiding my shadow because the, the island is more kind of west-south part of Japan and it's really hot and the sunlight is really strong. And click, go to the next, and they click the video. So there, can you click the video? So they're just resting in between my feet. <laughs> next. Uh, yeah, next. And uh, these are the like beautiful line of the bunny. <laughs> next. Yeah, here, you see the, the, the origin of a bunny could be the first seven or eight rabbit from school, or maybe introduced by the hotel, we don't know. But this really beautiful Dutch one, maybe the pet rabbit. and. Uh, uh, took later than the, uh, 30 or 40 years before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there is a small shrine, I guess, yes, but it's not maintained. And sometimes rabbits are just living inside this <laughs> shrine. Yeah. Next. So what are they doing now here? Next. Here is uh, a warren with mom bunny and babies. Next. And the, did, did you see the, how close they were? And the mom bunny didn't attack us, even though they have such, such a small bunnies. Next. Next. <laughs> and uh, this is one of the really surprising stuff that uh, we uh, may we made a long interview with the repeated uh, photographer, repeated visitor who, was a photo, who is the photographer. And they said the tendency, like the baby bunny does not afraid of humans, even they come to out with human, starts from just two or three years before. So until then, still the uh, adult rabbit will come, but the, the baby rabbit didn't approach the new human because they, somehow had uh, scared of us. But in the last uh, two or three years, they start to approach to human. Yeah. So this is the most uh, largest community of the rabbit just in front of the hotel. Next. So, so because the, here, the many tourists come to the hotel, and uh, this most of the Many of them do not know well about rabbit, and they sometimes, so, and they, it's so easy to catch the baby rabbit, sometimes they just take this rabbit to home. And uh, I don't know uh, what happens to this rabbit, but uh, this is also warned by the hotel people or any volunteers, do not take these monies to home. Next. Next. started to uh, put uh, some pellets on the back and lying down. And uh, I think it also started from YouTube or Twitter or something. And uh, then everyone started to do this same thing. 
So, forget that. <laughs> this is Cassandra. So you see here, compared to only here. <laughs> Next. And this was the rainy, the rainy day, and uh, you see some bunnies are having shelter from the rain. Really, this wall is hotel. Next. And somehow they like to fit this small hole. I don't know how, why they like this size of the. <laughs> And uh, of course they love to dig uh, at the root of the trees. But of course this is not good for trees and uh, hotel people try to make fence or wires to protect the ground and trees, but it was all, all their effort was in vain. <laughs> Rabbit can chew everything. So if you see this photo, how do you feel like that? A little healthy? Next. The yeah, there are many, many rabbits injured or sick in, just in front of the hotel. Next. Uh, so they, I, I'm actually not sh good at the guessing the ears of the rabbits, but this, according to Wallow's guess, they are like under two years old. And uh, the almost all, it was at uh, the March, end of March, and almost all females instead in, in front of this hotel were pregnant. So there are so many baby rabbits are born, uh, is born in spring, but still we see only bunnies under two years old. Yeah. And uh, 55, we counted how many bunnies are get injured or sick, and 55.6% of rabbits in front of the hotel was injured or sick. While the 200 out of 746, which is correspond to the 26.8% on average in the island. So the rabbit in front of the hotel was really injured and get sick while other rabbits are not so bad. And we saw like three or four dead bunnies in the whole week. Did we? Yeah. I don't even think we saw that. Yeah, we, we saw the actual dead bodies. Yeah. But the, the hotel people said that like 10 to 15 per day they are taking these dead bunnies because there are a lot of the, uh, visitors and they don't want to see them. So they have to clean out it. Next. Next. And this one had, looks like they have some Angora breed or something. Of course, they are they were no, not popular in Angora in the past, so I think it was pet rabbit. Or the key itself is not the, the pet rabbit, but maybe his agent, his parent or the grand grandmother maybe. Yes. Next. Next. And uh, they have really strong uh, feet. And uh, the, the heel, the angle of heel is something like that. And they climb up really high speed, with a very high speed, and try to get down. So they're really good at uh, driving heels, uh, living in such a place. Next. And uh, they also like the mountain. <laughs> okay, so I will pass to Koshi. So I'm going to um, move the, each slide so quickly. Please do not get something moving sick. <laughs> so, this is the nearby the tennis court, but tennis court is next by the hotel area. In hotel area, there is, I uh, know, in the nearby tennis court, there is a big warren, a big, big, huge apartment for the rabbit in the very steep crib. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the, that's the, down there, the mom. Oh, yeah. See, she is a mom rabbit. She is very pregnant. She is coming, uh, having babies. So, 
remember, she and this brown dot is he. So she is a very hard worker. She's a, become a very good mother. <laughs> Again, she has mouth, her mouth is full of twitches and leaves and neck. Yeah, still walking. But see the boy. It's very unique for us. Boy is accepted by the man brothers to uh, be together. It is very new for us because usually mother brothers don't accept the boy brothers nearby uh, giving birth pre uh, period of time. This is video. See the mom rabbit. Uh, yeah. oh, no, that is a boy. And she is here. We don't know why the boy rabbit is try to be with the mom rabbit, but. We, we just guess maybe protect her or maybe try to get something next chance. But and we don't know what he is doing now. In my favorite video. So Mother Rabbit picking up her fur and hey. <laughs> Mom is very busy, so but the boy maybe he is miss mom so much. And next is just um, coat area. There is a very long road for the walker and cycling. So also, it's a new, um, very same situation, rabbits come down to the people. And he is, or she is, hiding in the shadow. In the cold, uh, tennis court area, see, they make call. <laughs> So there is some maybe territories. Each territory has a certain amount of uh, uh, rabbits, and some territory is inside of the fence, and some territory is outside of the fence. It's coast area, so still there is some, but much fewer amount of bunny in the front of the hotel area. And some people said rabbits sometimes eat seaweed in the beach. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Here. Next. Next. And in the mountain, their shape is much healthier than a uh, hotel area for us because their muscle is very strong and their shape is very, I have no word but spunkle or something. And top of the area is 100 meters from the sea level. It's maybe uh, 22 feet height. And it is very steep, so sometimes people cannot get the top of the mountain. But still there are some rabbits. So Kotoyo and Margo get some rest. I just go up to the mountain, but <laughs> many people just give up. Next. 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 Yep, still next. Next. 
Yeah, that is very unique. You can see it maybe looks like an ordinary stiff of steps, but actually it's, we uh, change the angle. That angle almost vertical. So that kind of steepness, the rabbits manage very well. That means it reminds me, many people try to give some big horizontal area for the rabbit, but also the rabbits can manage the vertical space. So I actually had a full level of bookshelf apartment for my rabbit, and they very like that kind of full level of space. And to me, this picture um, tells the differences between hotel area rabbits and mountain rabbits behavior. So see, this rabbit, the shoulder is goes down, and the, the butt is toward, uh, no, away from us. That means distance from people. He said, or this rabbit says to me, I can snap your food, but I will fly immediately after you gave me food. Next. Next. Here. Next. Next. This rabbit was baby, and oh. then come up to us. He was just like that. <laughs> and this is my favorite picture. Can you guess who did this beautiful trimming? <laughs> Very beautiful. What kind of skillful gardener can make this kind of trim? <laughs> and also, and we guess this kind of work or job did by rabbit. And why we can guess? That means this point, but also the level of the cut of the leaves, is always 55 centimeter. It's a maybe maximum point. How can get the rabbits to the nature? And this piece is very clean and very round. We love that kind of beautiful pieces. <laughs> And the power plant, its power plant is next to the ferry uh, harbor. So these rabbits come from, uh, you no know, run to us, but also some rabbits are injured. So it is very interesting. In the mountain area, we we almost don't didn't see any injured rabbits, but nearby the human activity area, we saw some injured, still a uh, sick rabbit. And, uh, I will return to this mic to my Okay, no, 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 just in the last few minutes that we have, I just want to say another few things. So, by the way, with that silver martin that we just saw, so first off, he was sick. And in case any of you are wondering, well, why are some of them are sick and some of them are injured and why in some areas? So, the, the people bring, the tourists bring the food, and the tourists aren't there consistently. So, the tourists are there better in the summer, more than the other seasons. They're there on the weekends, more than the weekdays. Um, and so, that's going to contribute to the rabbit's ill health, in particular, their digestive health, because you've got this very un even way in which they're getting their food, right? And you saw that big pile of carrots and cabbage, which is the cheapest vegetable that you can buy out there. Um, and, and and so they get huge amounts of food at some times, and other times no food at all. And then maybe they're just eating the last moldy bits of last week's cabbage. So a lot of digestive disorders, we think. Um, and then in terms of the fighting, the fact that the fighting was much more prevalent in the human areas, like the hotel, was the worst, about 50% of the rabbits we saw in that area were injured because they're fighting over the food. So the people feel, and we felt that too, we're doing something good by bringing the food, but in reality, 
it's a it's problematic. It's it's questionable. Their their survival in part depends on the food, and yet on the other hand, it is unsustainable in terms of producing a healthy population. If that's what you really want, because we did not see seniors at all. The silver martin. The other thing about that. So people clearly still are abandoning rabbits on the island, and we did see some breed specific populations like the silver martins. Um, so they are in a precarious position because the government hasn't taken any action on the rabbits except to say that you cannot feed the rabbits, which everyone does anyway. The hotel used to sell food for the rabbits. They cannot do so anymore because the government doesn't want them being sold. If people literally stopped bringing food today for the rabbits, the population would go down by half and there would be some suffering. The population that would be left maybe would be healthier, perhaps. It's hard to say. Um, a couple of other things that I want to say um, um, about their behaviors and how unusual it is. So anytime an animal has been domesticated, and there's just a handful of mammals that have been domesticated over the past 10,000 years, besides dogs who were domesticated long before that. When an animal is domesticated, one of the things that happen is that the flight response is shortened. There are more, um, the, the new species, because there's generally speciation that happens during domestication, they're generally more likely to be around people, to want to be around animals, of other species to be more playful, to carry some of those juvenile behaviors that baby animals have into adulthood. And those are the kinds of things we see with domestication. Uh, we just saw an interesting talk back in Madison about rabbit domestication in particular and about the genes that have changed in the European rabbit as they became domesticated. And, and it's a small clump of genes that are, again are primarily associated with that flight response. And so here, and this is what's interesting to me. In the past few years, as Katoyo said, those baby rabbits have gone from being what you expect, which is a fearful of strangers, to being just as um, able to hustle as, um, as the adult rabbits. And I guess I should be saying next slide and, and next slide here. Um, um, Oh, this is actually sort of a different subject, that you have different definitions of the rabbits. You've got the government who says they're wild, you shouldn't feed them. You've got the tourists who say they're kawaii, so they're cute, we want to feed them, we want to uh, come and take pictures of them. And then we also have the hotel management, and the hotel management needs the rabbits because that's part of why tourists come and spend money now at the hotel. And the, tour, the hotel exploits, next slide, the um, uh, exploits the idea of the rabbits. This is the, um, the hotel website. There's images of the rabbits on the website. There's videos of the rabbits on the website. So the rabbits are beneficial to tourism on the island, and yet on the other hand, the rabbits are also putting off some of the senior tourists who aren't really crazy about rabbit poo everywhere and stepping in holes. But back to the other question, we are really interested in going back, if anybody feels like funding our next research trip, um, because we are really interested in looking perhaps at the genetics of these rabbits, how in a fairly short period of time, even if we date their beginning to the 1970s, um, they have again, gone wild in many ways, and yet on the other hand, have also become in some ways more domestic because of their ability to interact profitably with the people on the island. And we would love to see what that means. Whether you can even see any of that genetically, we don't know, but at least we'd like to know what's actually happening with these rabbits. So I will stop here and... Um, these are some of the new signs. So they're getting a little bit more strict about not feeding the rabbits, but people are still bringing food for the rabbits. And the reality is a lot of people wouldn't come to the island if they could not feed the rabbits because that, you know, part of our love for animals is that pleasure of interacting with them and that physical contact with them. And I think if that were lost, I think tourism might actually drop a bit. Do you have a question? Yeah, I do. I, I just wondered why you said that they're getting a little more strict. What why? Do you know what happened? Well, part of it is the destruction on the island. Part of it is a, is a part of a larger movement. So, for instance, um, uh, Miyashima is is an island that is, has deer on it. The deer are sacred to the Shinto shrine that's been on the island for thousands of years. And they have been historically fed by tourists for I don't know how long. And the government has cracked down on that as well. They're wild animals. You do not feed them. And the result is those deer are starving. Um, so, so part of it is that. Katoyo? Oh, this one is on the roads and in front of the hotel. So here, at least, they're trying to 
to make sure that they don't get hit by the bus and they don't get by, by the car. So they're trying to also protect them. So it's very mixed, the kinds of things that people are doing. There's no one, if anybody's going to ask, there's no agency that protects them or cares for them. There's a handful of people that are locals who come to the island frequently and have worked with the hotel to put out better signage. Um, but there's not a lot of advocates and people are worried about advocating too loudly for them because the danger is if we make a big fuss about the rabbits and their conditions, maybe they'll just exterminate them. Nobody actually knows and it is a, it is certainly it's a danger. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, so that's the signage. There's no sign that says, you know, bok choy is better than cabbage. You know, the, the, for the tourists to invest in, even in a little bit of money in signs at that level is not great. I mean, there's certainly, so, I think there's a sign that says no, like, leftovers, like, you know, no hot dogs, you know, at least that kind of thing. And they weren't doing any of that when they were there, but they bring huge amounts of food and as, as uh, Katoyo said so you know you'll give out your food on the island while you're there and then it's the end of the day and you're getting back on the ferry and you've got leftover food we'll just dump it at the edge of the ferry and and you know that's what they do Sorry. yes just one comment just one comment uh, about this leftover food i looked at the pictures this is not my our pictures i took it from twitter and uh, the recent uh, rec the number of mice is increasing drastically because of this restaurant first. Which, who knows whether that will cause a problem. We don't know. By the way, there's no natural predators to the animals on the island. There are crows who prey on the babies, but there's nobody who preys on the adults. Um, um, so, but now we have these mice. There are also now feral pigs on the island, and they maybe swam, swam there from the mainland. Nobody knows. Um, so there's other animals that are now potentially going to create other problems. So in any kind of animal tourism, ecotourism situation, it's a very interesting mixed bag in terms of how the tourists and the animals interact and what the results are for those animals' lives. Okay, thank you.